Hello folks and welcome to this week's music magazine. I've got some book review, well a book review for you, a couple of vinyl reviews and we'll begin with vinyl news right after this little piece of trivia. Okay, trivia, well I'm going to go love and marriage for this next trivia question. And it includes a question on the Beatles. Here we go. A simple, short question for you this time around. How many times were the members of the Beatles married in total? I'll say it again. How many times were the members of the Beatles married in total? Have a little think while you watch this video. I will tell you the answer at the end of the video. Until then, over to the magazine. we will start with vinyl news and well as ever I have names to tackle names which are sent to try me and I apologize to the band and I apologize to all of their fans because I'm talking about Danish heavy metalers Slate Slate I'm trying my best folks <laughs> I think it might be Slate tell me if I'm wrong tell me how to pronounce this one anyway that band whoever they are offers a new gatefold. It's a five track album. It's on Century Media. It's called Goddess, complete with growly vocals that contrast with a surprisingly classic guitar based rhythms. Also from Century is this, well, intense cold slice of Belgium black metal from, again, Weedwood. I think it might be Weedwood. The album is called There's Always Blood at the End of the Road, a rather upbeat and sunny title, which starts in extremis, dips for an occasional breather, and then you're back into the madness. Next up, we're looking at a couple of reissues from the UK audiophile outfit Demon. The band is Northern Uproar, and we're looking at two releases on clear vinyl. From that, well, energetic, bright, and poppy Brit pop outfit from Stockport. The releases include the 1996 self titled debut, featuring the singles Roller Coaster, From a Window, and Living It Up. Also, check out the follow up LP, Yesterday, Tomorrow, Today, from 1997, which was also the group's final LP, and includes the singles. Anyway, you look, a girl wants new and goodbye. Next, we're going to Norway and Oivind Holmes' neo psychedelic singer songwriter outing, the unreliable narrator from Crispin Glover. And I will put a link below in the description if you want to check it out. And I will do that with all of the sort of non major imprint or non major label labels. I will list them down below if you can't find them. This particular one features a CD but also a bonus 7-inch single. In terms of the music though, it's competent. Unremarkable, I would say. Moving on, we're looking at Disassembler and their album A Wave From A Shore on the Western label, which offers violin and electronica to form moody drones and loops from a rather epic soundstage. Next, we have an original soundtrack from the Wes Anderson film, The French Dispatch. This is a two LP compilation and it features works from Jarvis Cocker, Charles Aznavour, Grace Jones, and the composer Alexandre Desplat. Moving swiftly on, check out The Police's Greatest Hits on Polydor. This one has had lots of love and attention. It's been mastered at Abbey Road at half speed. And let me tell you, half speed is well worth the effort. Gives you an awful lot more 
in terms of sound quality. Resplendent in a rather nice gatefold and spanning six tracks, this one gives you two discs of goodness. And now moving to the ex-Prisoners vocalist and Buff Medway's bassist, garage rocker Graham Day, he has released his solo debut and it's called The Master of None. This is a band camp release on Countdown Records. And again, I'll put a link down below. And there's something distinctly humble pie about this particular one, I would say. Now on to Damien Lazarus, who has released an album of experimental electronica using Chinese instruments recorded in Bali and inspired by the documentary film Beijing Spring. That one is on the Secret Teachings label. Finally, brothers Peter O'Doherty and Reg Mombasa, they were the founder members of the band Mental As Anything. Both are here under the title Dog Trumpet via the albums River of Flowers from 2010 and Antisocial Tendencies from 2007. Quirky, idiosyncratic, and slightly whimsical. There's a bit of folk here, there's a bit of country and psychedelia, and lots of other things. It's an appealing sonic stew. And that's your lot in terms of vinyl news. Let's get straight into the vinyl reviews. First up, we're looking at the Penguin Cafe. Not the Penguin Cafe Orchestra, but the Penguin Cafe. They came a bit later, let me tell you about it. This particular release is on Erased Tapes, the record label that is not a cassette, and the album is called A Matter of Life. This is a reissue. Now, I will always hold a special place in my musical heart for the original Penguin Cafe Orchestra, as founded by Simon Jeffers, who sadly left us in 1997. The music itself offered a unique take in classical melodicism. Quirky, light, combining mostly organic music, but with a few electronic punctuations, the nature of the original band's experimentation can be revealed by their first public concert. That is, they supported on their debut, Kraftwerk, in 1977. And well, that's quite a debut. What I liked about the original group was its ability to combine avant experimentation with a sort of pop accessibility and to welcome the melody. Many avant-leaning collectives fear melody as if it's might bring them harm to their street cred, not the PCO. So, 10 years after Simon's death, the old band members got together for a celebration of the man and the music for a London concert. And part of that concert was Simon's son, Arthur, who I guess was affected enough by the occasion to trigger thoughts of injecting new life into his father's vision, with new original music featuring new band members but following the same stylistic path as his father Simon. So this was Arthur's debut as simply Penguin Cafe, and it's rather lovely, and it sounds like his father's son, and I approve. What Arthur is doing here is exploiting the still warm fashion for neoclassical album releases, and I've been receiving them on a regular basis for some time now. This album lives within that framework, but it adds a light, playful penguin sheen. The track Landau is a good example of that. It's a classical framed foot tapper, if ever there was one. In mastering terms, I was happy with the broad presentation, which was even, neutral, and balanced. There were no wayward frequencies to spoil the sonic party here. This is a fine recording in every way. Next up we have Jazz and Art Blakey's Jazz Messengers with the album on Atlantic called With Thelonious Monk. 
Originally released in 1958, this album takes a swathe of Monk's own bop catalogue and represents them through a messenger filter. Blakey's influence is important in adding a twist to the Monk machine here. Blakey sits in on drums here, while the keen sax you'll hear from the off is blown by Johnny Griffin, with Bill Hardman riding as wingman on trumpet and the wonderfully monikered Spanky DeBrest on bass. Griffin dives straight in on the lead track Evidence. The man doesn't wait. He doesn't ask if everyone's ready. The man fires on all cylinders, which forces everyone else to up their game. The album maintains that pace from there on in. Actually, it's great to hear Griffin and Monk bounce off each other in melodic terms here. It's also interesting to hear how the group switches into blues mode during Blue Monk. The sense of a lazy swagger and emotional lethargy, it comes naturally, it seems, which adds to, well, it adds to the power of the song itself. And again, Griffin's almost laconic delivery during his solos. Speaking of Griffin, and Griffin seems to be the star of the show, doesn't he? His Purple Shades track is the only non-monk track on this album. Another blues outing, the final track on this album, is a one for the band track because it wanders off the monk theme. It's enjoyable, nevertheless. In mastering terms, this music is beautifully presented with a bucket full of gorgeous texture around the upper mids. The rasp from the sax is both focused, precise, yet full of human error, just the way it should be. The percussion has an almost visible distance between it and everything else on the soundstage, while the piano is encased within its own sonic bubble, obeying its own laws of resonance to give a unique flavour. In fact, well, the entire album is quite delicious. And we will end this magazine with a book review. The Light Pours Out of Me, the official biography of John McGeoch. This book is authored by Rory Sullivan Burke, published by Omnibus for the price, last time I looked, of £20, and you get 259 pages. Now, not everyone will know John McGeoch. You may know his work before you know his name. McGeoch actually has influenced many a great guitarist. He was a member of the band Visage, but more importantly, he was also a member of Magazine, and then later of Susie and the Banshees, and later still, Public Image Limited. And he was only 48 when he died. His increasingly serious epileptic condition triggered a seizure when he was asleep, temporarily switching off his brain and stopping his breathing. Why that happened is really the point of this book. As his wife Denise stated in the book, the music business, and I quote, wasn't him as a person, and he didn't suit it. This book remains fascinating, though, both in personal terms as it relates to McGeoch, but also in broader cultural terms as it related to the music and the bands of the time. Thus, this book is awash with original interviews from the likes of Susie Sue, Howard DeVoto, and Johnny Marr, to Peter Hook, Billy Idol, and Keith Levine. For this account, more importantly, we hear from McGeoch's family. It's his family who declared that McGeoch fell into music. He could, and for his personal well being, possibly should have done many other things in his life. But he did music instead, and he was very good at it. Fame was the problem. 
McGeoch suffered from nerves and anxiety, so alcohol became a coping mechanism. Fame started his health issues. As it was, the health issues hampered his creativity. And this led, it led to frustration. Yet, as we hear, music may not have even been his overriding passion. This book is educational, but also enlightening. And it's quite moving. It's a tragic tale, but it's a book that needs reading. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And you will need an answer to that trivia question. So let's recap on the question itself. And the question is related to the Beatles, of course. And it is, how many times were the members of the Beatles married in total? And the answer is a total of nine times. John married Cynthia in 1962 when she was expecting their son Julian, then Yoko Ono in 1969. Shortly after, Paul McCartney had married for the first time to Linda Eastman. After Linda died in 1998, Paul married Heather Mills in 2002. He divorced her in 2008, marrying Nancy Chevelle in 2011. George Harrison married Patty Boyd in 1966, and then divorced her 11 years later. He subsequently married Olivia Arias. Is it Arias or Arias? Forgive me, Olivia, for that one if you ever hear this. But they got together in 1978, nevertheless. Ringo Starr married Maureen Cox in 1965 and divorced her in 1975. He then married Barbara Back and has been married to that good lady since 1981. And that's it, folks. I hope you got your Casio or your Texas Instruments out while you were calculating that lot. And I will be back on the weekend-ish for something hi-fi related. And I hope to see you then. Don't forget to look below for contacts for some of the items I've already mentioned. Also, some live chapter headings down there to navigate around this video. There are links to my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join my website, which has exclusive material over there you won't see here, and my Patreon page, which really needs your support to keep all of this going. There's exclusive stuff over there too. Check it out. Like I say, I hope to see you around the weekend for something hi-fi related. So, until that time, folks, and I hope to have your company then. Bye-bye for now.